There was a siege in ancient China that was truly horrific for all parties involved. Attackers had the strength of 150,000 soldiers, while defenders only numbered 10,000. One would think that with such overwhelming odds, attackers would have had an easy time capturing the city. But the truth is far from this. Even though Su Yang fell in the end, the losses on the attacker's side amounted to 100. 20,000 men, more than two-thirds of the army. To achieve this incredible feat, defenders had to commit truly horrific acts, namely when the food ran out by the order of the general, besieged soldiers started cannibalizing the civilians. In the end, 20 to 30,000 people were eaten by the soldiers defending the city. So here's the story of Siege of Su Yang. China is famous for many things. Tea, takeout, factories, the Great Wall, and of course, communism. But it is definitely not known for Tiananmen Square massacre, which of course never happened. But I think we should add one more thing to the list. It's many, many revolutions. You thought French were good at it, but no, no, misters, it's the Chinese who were the OG revolutionaries. Just to give you an idea of how good they were at overthrowing their emperors, take a look at their impressive list of dynasties. Be warned though, I will be mispronouncing every single name you will hear from now on. So, it all started with the Xia dynasty, which was overthrown by the Shang dynasty, that was overthrown by the Zhu dynasty, that was overthrown by the Qin dynasty. But these Qin guys, they were strong, so they started building the wall. And one of them even built the 8,000 statues for his grave. You think, surely these guys can hold it, but no, along came a rebel named Liu Bang overthrew the emperor and created the Han dynasty. So let's see if Han can keep it. Nope. Han Emperor also got deposed and China was split into three kingdoms, but then Su Dynasty managed to unite China again before being replaced by the Tang Dynasty, which was of course also replaced by the Song Dynasty. And then the Mongols came and ruined the fun for everyone. Don't you worry though, even after this, the revolutionary spirit never really died in China. <laughs> But to understand how 30,000 people got eaten, we need to focus only on one particular rebellion, An Lushan Rebellion. This rebellion happened during the Tang Dynasty. That's the one that later gets deposed by the Song Dynasty. But this is completely other rebellion that we will be ignoring. Instead, we will be focusing on a lowly Chinese officer of the Imperial Army named An Lushan who was given a command over a small group of soldiers. He was explicitly told by his commander not to attack the enemies. Hey An, don't attack them under any circumstances. I will attack them anyways. He was defeated and most of his men died. Generally, for such a grave mistake, any officer would be put to death, but An was favorite of his commander Zhang Shogui. Zhang Shogui. So instead of executing him straight away, he sent An to the emperor and asked him to be the judge. Thus, Emperor Zhuazong, Emperor Shuzong, and his future nemesis An Lushan met each other. Emperor liked An and decided to spare him, even though his consul practically begged him to execute him. Look at him, your majesty. He is a barbarian and he's fat. You should definitely execute him. No. I'm sure I won't regret this. Thus, An Lushan was saved and sent back to Zhang. But he was stripped of all titles. He was not deterred, though. An would quickly race through the ranks again and after a lucky accident managed to be sent back to the emperor's castle. This time not as a prisoner but as a decorated war hero. Using his quick wit and his fatness he managed to befriend the emperor but more importantly though he got really up close and tight with emperor's favorite consort Yang Guifei who is also known as one of the four famed beauties of China. Now comes the truly weird part. 
Consort Yang adopted An Lushan as his son. Emperor was Emperor was actually happy about this. Ah, An is now just like my son. Therefore, he definitely won't betray me. But soon, rumors started spreading that Consort Yang was <clears throat> a different kind of stepmother for An. Emperor, of course, dismissed all the warnings. Are you all crazy? It's his mother, stepmother, stepmother that we're talking about. Together, An and Yang came up with a genius plan to make him a general. <sighs> what the f is this? It's our baby An. I gave birth to him three days ago. Don't you remember? <laughs> Thus, fed by some kind of uh, fatherly love, Emperor really made An Lushan commander of the biggest army in China. And as you'd expect, he instantly started plotting a rebellion. <whistles> My son! No, no. He is planning a rebellion. Please. You have to do something, your majesty. He's my son. He won't betray me. At first, emperor ignored all the pleas. But finally, he caved in and sent an eunuch to check what was really happening in the north. You're clearly building up the army for the rebellion. What do you have to say for yourself? Understandable. Have a nice day. Because of this, it took Emperor a couple of more years to understand what was truly happening. But by that time, An Lushan's preparations were complete. He commenced with his rebellion. Quickly, he swept through the whole northern China, driving Emperor's forces out. Now, most of the Chinese population and the army was under his control. Emperor had to evacuate the capital. Temporary stalemate ensued and An Lushan started enjoying his life as a new emperor. He created his own dynasty named Yan Dynasty, and he got even fatter, ignored the war, and never got out of his shiny new castle. Soon the questions of who was to succeed him started coming up. Traditionally, the throne goes to the eldest son, but An did not like his eldest son, Ang Xingxu, Instead, he preferred the younger one, An Qingen, and was considering naming him the crown prince. But before this could happen, the elder son decided to assassinate him and named himself the successor. An Qingxu wanted to break the stalemate, so he amassed his armies and started a push. To get to his rival's capital, he had to go through the strategic city of Suyang, to deny him this opportunity, the Emperor Shu Zong appointed the famed, the honorable, the most brilliant Zhang Sun as the commander of his army. It is precisely this man that will order 30,000 people, mostly women, children and the elderly to be eaten. But all of this in the next video.